The epistle is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 11. Oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and of the knowledge of God. How incomprehensible are his judgments, and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor, or who has first given to him that recompense shall be made to him? For of him, and by him, and in him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Holy Gospel. Taken from St. Matthew chapter 28. At that time Jesus said to his disciples, All power is given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore teach ye all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you all days, even to the consummation of the world. Thus are the words of the sacred scripture. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today is the feast of God himself, the most blessed Trinity. And today is also the feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary as Queen. So we have such a tremendous day all packed into one. And on this day also the happiness of these, these five children in the front row here, who will receive their First Communion today. Santiago, turn the fan on low, at least on low. You don't have to turn off that. It's going to get hot in this chat. It's going to get hot in this chapel. <laughs> because how many, like you children, how many, like all of us, made our First Communion? And how many who have made their First Communion are now burning in hell? And forever they remember their First Communion in hell. And they look back and they say, how did I waste? Why did I waste such a grace? Not only one Communion, but many Communions. And we know from that story of Annette, the soul that was condemned to hell after a car accident. And she appeared to her friend, Claire. And Annette's soul is burning in hell, even now as we speak. She made her First Communion. And how many have already made First Communion and are well on the road to hell? How does this happen? And St. Paul says, speaking of the, of the chosen the chosen Israelites with Moses, all of them ate the manna from heaven. They all saw the miracles of God. They all saw the tremendous power of God. But with most of them, God was not well pleased. Why is this? Why is this? We touch on the mystery of grace and free will. On man's side, we spoil everything. On man's side, we can destroy all of God's works, and men being perverse because of original sin, and all of us are in some way prone to evil. All of us are inclined towards evil. We are all twisted in some way. We're all jagged. And we all need God's chiseling on us and polishing on us. Otherwise, we will not go to heaven. And we also need to have in us the life of God himself. And this is the beauty of today's feast. It's the crowning of all the church year is this feast, which begins on the first Sunday of Advent. That's the first New Year's Day for the church calendar. And today, the Blessed Trinity is honored and glorified because everything begins in God, everything ends in God. And God is not some distant being out there, as the Freemasons would have us hold. 
as the Freemasons have successfully uh, destroyed any link of God with man by removing the Blessed Trinity from the constitutions of countries where he should be, removing the Sacred Heart from the flags of the nations where he should be, and where the Sacred Heart of Jesus himself asked that France, specifically France, put the heart of, of, his, of our Lord Jesus Christ on their flag. And the foolish French kings, in their pride and stupidity, they didn't obey. And so France and the whole world suffered a punishment from the French Revolution. And we're going to see the same with Our Lady of Fatima. A hundred years ago, she asked the Pope to consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Has any Pope done it yet? No. And a hundred years will be 2017. God cannot be pleased. God cannot be pleased. So, God, on His side, has done everything He could for us. And you look at the love of God, the Father, and He is the principle. Through Him all things, through, through God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, God the Father is the principle, who begets the Son, but not a beginning of time. And through the Son, all things were made. And the Holy Ghost, who is the third person of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, is given to us in the sacred scripture, in all of the Catholic tradition. He's given to us His own divine Son on the cross. He gives Himself His divine Son in the Holy Eucharist. He gives us the Holy Ghost. Last week we had the Feast of Pentecost which is the pouring out of the Holy Ghost into the soul. And that is what's called by sanctifying grace, that you are made a temple of the Most Blessed Trinity, that you are made a, a temple where God dwells. Your soul and your body become, in God's eyes, resplendent with light and beauty because God, the Holy Trinity, lives there. This is what's called the indwelling of the, of the sanctifying grace in the soul. And God has given us so much. And we can go on and on and on with the list. He's given us his mother. He's given us a bodyguard, the guardian angels. He's given us so many graces. And yet, why is it that there's people who have received all these graces? Priests, <coughs> bishops, even popes burning in hell. How is this possible? Even nuns. And that's because men have died and lived without sanctifying grace. They have not loved God the way they should. And God has loved us with an infinite love. He has poured out all He can for us. But we on our end, where do we place God? Where do we place God? And uh, as, as, as an age, as a nation, our nation blasphemes God. Our laws of our Supreme Court of the United States of America and our president, they blaspheme God. And our bishops, the Catholic bishops throughout the world, because they, they hold the heresies of Vatican II and promote the new mass, which insults our Lord Jesus Christ, they blaspheme against God. And we even have a pope, the high priest of the new law, who blasphemes God with his horrible ecumenical, ecumenical meetings and treating all religions as if they're equal in God's eyes. And these things are very serious sins that cry for God's chastisement on this earth. And that's not even including all the other sins that have been accumulating and our own sins that add to it. And so man, man turning from God, he loses the life of grace. And this is what a sin really is, to turn from God towards some creature, to some pleasure, to some vanity, to turn our back to God. That's what sin is. And so, God on His part 
is infinitely merciful, he's infinitely good, but he's also just. And this is what our modern world has forgotten, is the justice of God. And we hear a lot about the mercy of God and the love of God, and it is infinite. And he, that's how God wants to be known. He wants to be known as love. Deus caritas es. And he wants to draw us by his love. That's why he died on the cross with his arms open, his head bowed, as St. Bernard says, to embrace each soul. But on our part, on man's part, how often men turn from God. And, that's, and God knew this. Our Lord knew this. And that's why he instituted the great sacrament of confession. Knowing that man will fall and, and he'll trip up and he'll commit suicide <coughs> spiritually by mortal sin. And for the humble and contrite heart, God never turns away. He always shows mercy to a sincere and contrite and humble heart. And that's why, dear children, you who are going to make your first communion, you must always, always see and be mindful of the love of God. But be mindful also of the justice. We have to always remember both sides. And it's true, God's love outweighs and outshines His justice. But we also must remember the punishments of God. And one of the greatest punishments of God is eternal hellfire for, for a soul who dies in mortal sin, for a, a soul who dies without the state of sanctifying grace and without the true faith. They cannot go to heaven. And hell is no joke. As I told you yesterday in our little day of recollection, there's no time in hell when they say, okay, let's just have a five-minute break. Let's just get out and get some fresh air for 10 minutes. Doesn't, doesn't stop. The fires of hell, the screams of hell, the stench of hell, the endlessness of hell. Now this chapel is already starting to heat up. You can feel it, especially in heavy vestments. And still, I promise you, there will be an end to this sermon. There will be an end to this holy mass. But in hell, there is no end. And the fires of hell cook within and without the body. And the body will be united to the soul after the day of judgment. And so the body will suffer in hell with the soul forever in hell. And in the opposite is true. In heaven, the bodies of the saints will be truly free. They will fly where they want. And uh, you'll never need to eat because you won't be hungry. You'll never need to sleep. You won't be ever tired. And always seeing the happiness of the Blessed Trinity and the company of the saints. These are what's called the four last things that we must never forget. But we've got to think about these things a lot. Because the modern world tries to get, get rid of these things. Four last things. Death. Death, judgment, hell, or heaven. These are what's called the four last things that all of us, all of us, need to contemplate a lot. St. Teresa of Avila, she said, if you meditate 15 minutes on these realities, you will save your soul. The devil will never get a grip on you. But the devil gets a grip on us because we forget we forget the love of God. We forget why we're here on earth. And we get distracted with the vanities of this world. And we take, we, we see everybody in this modern world drink sin like a swimming pool. They drink, swim like, drink sin like water. And sin goes unpunished. And in fact, the Supreme Court laws of the nation insult God by instituting laws that go against His commandments. Especially the first one. I am the Lord thy God. You shall have no strange gods before me. And yet our Constitution allows for all false religions. That is a, one of the biggest sins possible of a nation. To insult the true God, the Blessed Trinity, and, the, and God who became flesh for us 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, Muhammad is false. Muhammad is burning in hell. As St. Peter Mavemus, when he was dying, several Muslims came around him. He was in Damascus, in the Far East, in the East rather, in the Palestine. He was dying and several Muslims came around the bed, around his bed trying to convert him to become a Muslim. And St. Peter Mavimenu said, Allah is a false prophet and Muhammad is burning in hell. And they slew him. They chopped his head right off as they're doing today to many Catholics. And that is what the Quran teaches. So these false religions, Protestantism, Protestantism allows divorce, it allows contraception. Those two things are enough to destroy a nation, and that's what's happening to our Western world. So it's, it's a grave sin for the leaders of a state, the civil society, to allow all false religions what they call equal opportunity. That is one of the gravest sins against God, let alone the sins against the Sixth Commandment, and Ireland has just fallen on that one, and the Catholic bishops, to their shame, are approving it, and one priest even stood up in his parish and said, I'm, I'm also a rainbow flag waver. And instead of driving him out of the church and pelting him with rocks and driving him out of their town, because he's leading so many to hell by teaching false things, the, the, the whole parish stood up and gave him a standing ovation. This is an Ireland, the once Catholic Ireland. So children, never forget, you are, we are living in an age right now that has completely insults God completely turned its back against God. And yet there's everybody smiling, everybody's nice, even, uh, even these modernist popes who have, who have led many souls to hell by their scandals and bishops and priests. They all have nice smiles. <coughs> and all these state leaders they, who smash God's commandments, they all have nice smiles, but smiles does not get us to heaven. In fact, the devil has a pretty big smile, too, from those who have seen him. But smiles don't get us to heaven, but this, we must love God, keep his commandments, and remember every day those four last things. I'm going to die someday, and it's not going to be too long from now. Because if you live a hundred years, that's long, but what is it? What's a hundred years? It's nothing. If you live 120 years, it's nothing. So, death is certain. And we're all going to die, and we've got to remember this. And we must not be attached to this world. You're going to lose your car, you're going to lose your house, you're going to lose all your relatives and friends by death. All that's going to matter is how much did I love God? How much did I love my neighbor in God? That's what's going to count. And am I in the state of grace? And do I really love God first? Death, <laughs> judgment, we will be judged immediately after we die. And then there will also be what's called the general judgment. Because what you do now influences other people. What you do influences other people. So if a girl dresses immodestly, and she leads other men into sin, she is guilty of dragging maybe five, ten, hundred souls to hell with her. That's why fathers, watch over the dress of your, of your girls. And it's summertime and the fashions are coming out that are just be beyond immoral. They're just, they drag these poor girls in the mud. And the men, it's the men's fault and the father's fault for allowing their daughters to dress this way. And we allow our advertisements to, to smear our girls like mud and drag them in the mud. It's the fault of the men. And God's uh, as sister, little Jacinta, who saw the Virgin Mary of Fatima and saw how she said many fashions will be introduced that will offend our Lord very much. 
And that's our time. And I'm told the girls, they go shopping, they can't, they want to find modest clothes, but they can't find many modest clothes. Even marriages, they have a hard time finding <clears throat> modest marriage dresses. This is our awful time that insults God because man has forgotten death is real and uh, that we will face God in our judgment. And don't be mistaken, Pope Francis will be judged as Pope when he comes before Christ the King. <coughs> president Obama will be judged as President of the United States when he comes before not Allah, not Muhammad, and not some other false re religion or king. It's going to be our Lord Jesus Christ that will President Obama comes before when he is judged, like all of us. Because Christ is only true God. He's the only true king. And he's the only one that's been given all power from the Father to judge the human race. And this same God loves us so much, he dwells in the Blessed Sacrament. He gives us his Sacred Heart. He gives us forgiveness. He gives us all he can. And we're going to remember that when we come before him and see his eyes. And he'll show you his wounds and say, I died for you. I gave my life for you on the cross, and I renewed it every Mass. Don't you remember I was in the Blessed Sacrament waiting for you to visit me? And you never even thought of me. And I gave you my five first Fridays, and you could care less. You started, but then you got careless. I gave you my mother, her rosary, and you treated it like, oh, it's just a nice thing the priests always preach about. but. Well, we got to focus on the real things like sports, entertainment, and uh, the gadgets. And our Lord will say, look, uh, I waited for you in confession. I gave you priests. I waited in the Blessed Sacrament. You never, you went to the world. You went to drinking and seeking other women and, and stupid entertainment. Instead of coming to me, I have all the solutions to your problems. I'm your God. And how many men go seeking distractions when they got to come on their knees before our Lord Jesus Christ? He has the answers to your problems. Not the bar, not the internet, not the Facebook, and not the gossip centers. Christ the King. And that's why often he gives us problems and crosses so that we come to him and become like little children to our Father. But we are all proud. We're all so proud, modern man. And our Lord will say, I gave you my guardian angel, and I gave you my own father and son, and I, Father and the Holy Ghost, and I who lived in your soul by grace. But you didn't care about that either. So we will all be judged, and everything we do influences others for good or bad. So on the general judgment, St. Thomas Aquinas says you need the general judgment because St. Benedict is still influencing the world. And so all the souls he's still influencing will, will add to his crown in heaven. And also uh, this, the great sins of Muhammad. He is still influencing the world and he will be judged by Christ the King, Muhammad, will be judged by God, Christ who is God because Muhammad blasphemes against Christ saying that he's just a Joe prophet. But he's not. He is God. And Muhammad is still influencing the world right now. And on the general judgment it has to be shown all the damage and harm he has done and continues to do to the end of the world. So the general, the, our death, the judgment, particular and general, hell. Always, children, remember hell. Oh, Father, you're being mean. How cruel of you to be saying like this on the children's first communion day. Can't you be positive and optimistic? Dear children, I want to be very positive and optimistic. The, children, the Virgin Mary showed three little children hell. It is not a joke. And what's positive and optimistic about it is that you and I have a chance to escape going there. And we better escape going there because it's not a joke. 
Hell is real. Many souls, many, many souls go there. St. Teresa said, like, like snow falling in a blizzard, that's the number of souls going to hell every day. And about every 40 seconds, somebody is dying on earth. Souls falling into hell are like snowflakes falling from the sky, while those reaching heaven can be counted on the fingers of one hand, said St. Teresa. So, children, and all of us too, one of the saints said, I meditate every day 15 minutes on hell. And he's not there, he's a saint. St. Teresa of Avila said one of the greatest graces God gave her was to see her place in hell. St. Teresa, she was a nun also at the time. And we got to think about that, because that is the reality, that I could go to hell. And the Virgin Mary, she begged us at Fatima, pray and do penance because many sinners go to hell, because why? Nobody prays for them. Nobody does extra penance for them. And if I die in mortal sin, I will go to hell because I died dead. My life, my soul is dead. We need to live in the state of grace. And so uh, remember hell. <clears throat> hell exists. And the Virgin Mary gave you the scapular. Today you're going to be enrolled in the scapular. The brown scapular and Our Lady promises those who die wearing the brown scapular will not suffer eternal fire. And yet we Catholics, so foolish, so foolish, and how many adolescents are careless on this one? They want to be cool and wear all the good luck charms, but where's the scapular? Where's the scapular? They got all these fancy brass and gold and silver. Where's your scapular? One priest was saying mass. A uh, communist was hired to shoot him. He walked in, shot his back, took off running. The altar boy heard the bullet whiz right by his ear. And the priest continued saying Mass. And after the Mass, they, they genuflected, went to the sacristy. And the altar boy looked at Father and said, Father, there's a hole in your vestment. And when he un untook off all the vestments, he saw the bullet was melted to his brown scapular. The scapular is a powerful weapon. Don't take it lightly. And it's not uh, some good luck charm. Wear it faithfully. It is one of the weapons God gave us in these days. The rosary and the scapular. To escape the fires of hell. And finally, dear children... Remember, we're only on earth for a short time, and our real home is heaven. And we must also think even more about our heavenly fatherland, the happiness God has prepared for those who love him. Eye has not seen, ear has never heard, nor can any man imagine, possibly imagine, what God has prepared for those who love him. And the joys of heaven surpass any of the joys we can imagine on this earth. So, dear children, that's why God becomes so small in the Blessed Sacrament. That's why He's going to give you Himself. And He washed away your sins in confession. They already made their first confession. And that's why today He's going to give Himself to you completely. You receive the whole burning heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. The very love of God the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, you receive in Holy Communion. And that is all that God wants for us, is that we love Him and think of Him in return, and run after Him by keeping His commandments. So you little children, I know this is getting long, but hell is much longer. Hell is much longer. And so, ask the Mother of God on this day, ask the Virgin Mary, ask your guardian angel, give me what to say. And if you want to ask a great thing on your First Communion, ask to go to heaven and become a saint. Because that's the only reason we're on earth. As one great Catholic French writer said, there's only one sadness, not to be one of the saints. There's only one sadness, 
not to be one of the saints. And all of you are meant and are desired to be saints by the heart of Jesus and Mary. You have all the means to become saints. And all the saints are those who reach heaven. The ones canonized reach heroic virtue. And we're also called for heroic virtue in these uh, heroically evil times. And you children, you're meant to be the saints of these days. You are meant to be the martyrs of these days. And you mothers, be ready to see your sons hung up on telephone poles and shot and taken to prison and starved to death. You've got to be ready to see this. We are entering those days of great persecution. And already, we can still preach against the vices. But the priests also are already, many preachers throughout the world are already being arrested and put in prison for preaching against the flag, rainbow flag wavers and preaching that there's only one truth and that Muhammad is false. And we're entering those days again. It's happening now. The bloodiest century was the 20th century. What's the 21st century going to be? So you children, you're stepping into a major war, and our Lord knows this. So he's giving you all the strength that you need. He is your God, and he loves you, and he's going to fight with you if you will just fight with him. Fight with him. He's our king. He's our captain. So let's turn to the mother of God. And let's all of us today make this like our first Holy Communion. Our first time touching the very sacred, glorified body of the living God, Christ himself, in Holy Communion. And ask him to inflame us. I have come to cast fire on the earth, Christ said. What do I want but that this fire be burning and kindled in you? So that others in the world can see you in the workplace. See you... Uh, uh, in the shopping stores, see you playing your sports, and see you out in the world, and they can say, that's, that's a walking epistle of what a Catholic should be, of a child of God, of one who's striving to keep his, the commandments. So let's ask the Blessed Mother to inflame in us from her heart a little drop of a spark of her heart to love our Lord with. And let's go, let's get on now. Enough talk, now action. God, his sacrifice will be soon on this altar. The flood of graces will be pouring out of this altar. For those who are thirsty, Christ will fill you. So ask that grace, a great desire, a great thirst for God himself. O Mary conceived without sin, O Mary conceived without sin, O Mary conceived without sin,